Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Uh, today, uh, I guess I just want to tell you uh, what I'm trying to do. Uh, you know, I, I, I did a review on this, uh, this 100 amp battery, this red odor right here. Uh, and you know, so I discharged it all the way and the way I charged it is I used a 1.1 amp, basically a tick, tickle, a trickle charger. Uh, for a car, but it has a lithium ion phosphate setting, a lithium setting on it. I used it and it charged it and it took three days. And so I need to charge this battery back up to do uh, another thing I want to do with uh, you know, kind of like a second part of the review. Uh, and I'm trying to find out how to charge it. So uh, yesterday it was pretty sunny. So what I did is I took a couple of solar panels off my system, my 24 volt system. And uh, I just plugged them in, you know, I've got, I've got a, a, a Renogy 30 amp charge controller right here. I went ahead and just wired it all up and let it charge out there for the day. Uh, but it didn't fully charge it. So I was like, okay, well, I guess I could put that small charger back on. I mean, but I really want to get a charger, you know, that, that'll push more than 1.1 amps. That made me remember that uh, back a few videos ago, someone commented in one of my videos saying, hey, uh, Will Prowse did this video where you can take a, um, a computer power supply, like a laptop power supply, and plug it directly into your charge controller. And then you can use it to charge your battery without using solar. Um, the reason I'm thinking about this is because today, uh, you probably can't see it, but right now I'm getting 59 watts from my, you know, from my solar panels outside because it's raining and just gross outside. So what I found is I have a, a laptop charger from a laptop that's uh, 15 years old. La yeah, laptop is probably 15 years old, I'm guessing. It came with Windows Vista, if that explains anything to anybody. Uh, but what I see on here is that the output is 19 volts DC at 6.32 amps. So that's a lot better than 1.1 amps. Um, so what I believe I can do is here's the plug that goes in, you know, into the laptop. So I'm going to cut it like right here. And, uh, what I'm hoping, I'm not, I didn't watch Will's video, I probably should, um, but I'm going to cut this. I'm hoping that there's just two wires in here that it says that there's, it's 16 gauge. So I'm going to cut this wire, hopefully there's two in here, uh, you know, I'm going to put ferrule tips on them, and I'm going to put them right into the PV plus and minus of my solar charge controller, uh, hook up my battery, plug it in, and we'll see what happens. So. Here we go. To make sure I don't cut the wrong cord, let's get rid of this guy. And we're going to be working with this cord right here. So I kind of want to keep this because unbelievably that laptop still works. Right now I'm going to leave about six inches of it, six to nine inches. All right, bye bye cord. All right, uh, it looks like there's conductors on the outside and then there's uh, conductors on the inside. So I'm not sure how I'm gonna do this. All right, here's the outside conductors. Okay, so I don't know what the outside and inside conductors are. I don't know if it's positive or negative, so we'll have to clamp, we'll have to touch it with a multimeter while it's on to find out. We're gonna have to really tape this up too. Okay, so let's go ahead and get this one now. 
This one I only need to do a little bit because I want to put a frill. All right, there is my two. If you can see that, there's my two wires. Now, what I need to do, make sure there's no strands that are stray. I need to put ferrules on both of these and then tape up the rest of this to make sure I'm not, there's no touching of positive and negative. All right, it said that this is 16 gauge wire, so let's go with 16 gauge ferrules. Would you be these black ones right here? All right, I'm gonna go ahead and get some tape and tape that all up. Jesus, Keats. Nice failure. I know you did. I thought you were better. Actually, I'm going to use a little bit of heat shrink. Okay, that's a lot better. And then I just need a little bit of tape right there. Alright, well, uh, I'm going to have to do this over again because, I mean, I only gave myself this much space. I don't know what I was thinking, but uh, I'm going to have to cut it off, do the whole thing over, but give myself so those things can be a lot more separated so they can go into these slots. Keynote, make sure you give yourself plenty of wire. There we go. Okay. My two ferrule plugs are on there. Let's go ahead and get some heat shrink. Shrink that all up. So now what I need to do is plug this in and test these to see if see which one's positive. Got it in my clamp. I'm gonna go ahead and plug it in and test it with a multimeter. Put on some safety glasses just in case. All right, we're gonna go positive to white. And that gives us 19 volts. 19 volts with, uh, and that is the correct polarity. So that means the white cord, it was the inner cord that was the positive, and the one that I heat shrinked is the negative. Okay, let's go ahead and turn it off. Unplug it. Make sure it's completely off before we do anything else with it. The computer power supply is still unplugged, so I'm going to go ahead and plug this in because it won't hurt anything. Usually you want to plug in your battery first because you never want to plug in solar panels before a battery into a solar charge controller because it can burn out your solar charge controller. Okay, those aren't going anywhere. All right, now I'll grab my battery. Okay, battery plus. All right, cranking it down. Okay, all the wires are good. Shows the battery's at 13.2. zero amps coming in from the solar, from the solar panels so let's go ahead and plug in our power supply and see what happens plugging it in right now
Oh, please don't tell me I did all this for nothing. Okay, there we go. Oh, is it not enough voltage? It says it's only 1.2 volts coming in from the solar panels. Alright, well, this one didn't work because the, the computer power supply is basically powering off about five seconds after it starts going up. So it gets up to about a half an amp and then it just shuts off. So I'm going to see if I can find another computer power supply. I, want, I, I know I have one more around here uh, that is from an old laptop I don't, that's actually broken. So I'm gonna go try to find it, see if we can do the same thing. Here was our old power supply and after I plugged it in for about five seconds it would get up to 19 volts and it would get up to about a half an amp and then the light would turn off and this power supply would die. So Hopefully it's just the power supply, because like I said, this thing is like 15 years old. So, I've got a different power supply now. And I went ahead and did the exact same thing to it. As you can see, I went ahead and uh, put the ferrules on there. I checked the polarity, I made sure this was uh, positive, this was negative. Taped it all up, so it's all ready to go. So let's try this power supply now. And if this one doesn't work, then I want someone to leave something in the comments about why computer power supplies will not power a solar charge controller since there's 19 volts coming through here. That should be enough. All right, those are in the good, everything's good. Battery's still connected, it says zero amps. 0.4 volts coming in from the solar panel, so that's going to change as soon as I plug it in. Put on my safety glasses, and let's plug it in. Alright, lights turning on, voltage is getting up to 19.3. Let's see if the amps start going up, because before it wouldn't go up past 0.5 amps. And the output on this, I believe, is 7.7 .7 amps. Here we go. And the same thing. All right, well, uh, there you have it. I went through two power supplies. This one and this one. And they both did the exact same thing. They got up to 19 volts, and then when the MP MPPT started actually pushing the amperage through, it got up to about a half an amp, and then both power supplies would just shut off. I'm guessing it's maybe a safety feature in the power supply. Um, I, I guess I will go back to uh, Will Prowse's video and see how he did it. Maybe he did it with a desktop power supply like for a desktop computer that could be it uh, but thank you so much for watching this video I'm sorry that it didn't work out the way that we all planned uh, I'm just gonna go back to charging my battery with 1.1 amps until um, until I order a new charger so thank you so much for watching this video if you like my video please hit that like button and if you want to see more of my content, please subscribe. It really helps out. Again, thank you so much, and you all have a great day. Bye-bye.